Hello and welcome to another Sonograph tutorial video. This time I'm going to show you how you can create an enforceable architectural model for an existing application from scratch. I'm not going to explain the details of our architecture DSL. You can learn about that either by reading the respective articles on our blog site or by studying the online documentation of Sonograph. I'm also planning to cover that topic in another upcoming video. For this video, I'm going to import a simple example project directly from IntelliJ. So let's go and do that. I'm going to the File menu, create a new system based on Java IntelliJ project file. I'm giving the system a name. And I have to select a directory where to store that system. And I'm going to store that actually directly in the fitting workspace directory as soon as I find it. Which is this directory here. And I'm also using a predefined quality model. So I'm getting some stuff for free and also some, some metric thresholds checked for me and even some scripts that check for certain bad smells in, in our code base. Clicking on next, I have to select the IntelliJ project directory. Which is again this one here. And Sonograph automatically finds our code, finds the root directories and the output directories. The project is imported, but I don't have any metrics yet because it's not yet passed. So we run the parser by clicking on this little refresh icon up here, scan our code base. And we have something like 10,000 lines in this system, 7,000 real lines of code. And the overall coupling seems to be okay. Average component dependencies is 15. So <clears throat> that's a decent value for, for a system of that size. So I'm not worried too much about coupling. What I like to do next is usually opening an exploration tree so you can analyze the dependencies in this project. So I'm gonna do that right now. And this will already give me an idea about the layering and the structuring of this application. What we can see here that we have two major blocks, one called DDA example and one called DDA. DDA stands for Domain Data Adapter. And basically the DDA example is using the DDA, um, the Domain Data Adapter framework. And inside of those main packages we have a substructure or something like a business package an integration package and in DDA we have a business integration and foundation package there seem to be something like an initial layering of our application now let us map this information to an architectural model so to do that i'm first going to bring up the architecture view and usually i like to place it next to the navigation view over here and in the architecture view I can now create a new architecture file that describes our architectural model. I will call it demo architecture. And in this case, I unselect this checkbox. This checkbox is very useful if you have a multi-module project and already defined allowed module dependencies in your workspace dependencies or from importing uh, from one of your IDEs then you can create an initial architectural model. In this case, it's kind of pointless because we only have one module, so that wouldn't give us anything useful. So now we have our architecture file, and um, then what I can do is I can put our exploration view next to the architecture file and start working on the architecture. So I'm creating two main artifacts. I call one artifact the application itself and another one is going to be our DDA framework. Oh, I 
like to use capital letters for artifacts. Now we assign the code to those artifacts. I would say in that case it's pretty simple. I could say star star slash TDA example slash star star. And the other one we just include everything in the TDA package. Now we can already save it. And then we see those two artifacts, but our architecture check is not activated yet, so I have to right click here and say add to architecture check. So what we're seeing now is that all the connections from DDA example to DDA suddenly become red. Yeah, because those are architecture violations now because we forgot to connect the two. And one way I can do it is make our framework public. It means all the artifacts defined above it can use it. So that should make everything green again. Now we can continue to work on the inner structure of those two artifacts. And so I'm just going to create some nested artifacts here. One called business. And the other one called integration. Again, we can use very simple include patterns here. As you notice, I can just use star star slash business slash star star because those patterns work hierarchically. So it means in the nested business artifact, I can only draw from the types that are already in, in my application context. So in that case, it works out perfectly. And I can allow business to use integration. And for integration, this becomes pretty simple. I just say star star slash integration slash star star. Wonderful, and then we can do the same the same thing down here. And we add a third layer here, the foundation layer that was missing. Artifact foundation. Star star slash foundation star star closing braces and since foundation is kind of a utility layer I'm declaring it public so that the two layers defined above it artifact and integration can actually use them. So now everything looks pretty, we can save it. And we got a little bit more structure and I can actually visualize, oh, there's something, something going on here. Oh, connect to integration. And I have the same problem down here, connect to integration. And now I get this nested structure here. And we can actually also visualize it in a special exploration view, an architecture exploration view. And I put this over here. And now I can see the life dependencies between those artifacts nicely structured. And I can also see what is assigned to the artifacts in detail. Now let us conclude this video by testing our new architecture in our IDE, in this case in IntelliJ. So I have the same project open in IntelliJ and I'm going to activate our Sonograph plugin here. I already selected our architecture directory up here, I just need to click on activate. And then the plugin should be starting running and 
get already a useful error marker here that wasn't there before. We have a little script running that checks the code for all places where somebody using system out print line. And you get a nice warning marker here. But now let's create an architecture violation. Um, we're now in our DDA framework here and we're going to introduce a dependency to something that's in the application itself. Let me save that and then compile. Now you get a nice red marker on this code line here telling that uh, we cannot access roll.java from the place we, where we are. So now since we have created that specification we can automatically verify it in our IDEs. We can also verify it in the build so you would need sonograph build for that. You can um, make your build fail as soon as architectural relations occur. In my company, for example, build fails every time somebody introduces a package cycle or an architecture violation. And we will also be able to see that violation over here. If I just click on refresh, I see that red arc going up here from the business layer in domain data adapter to the business layer in app. So this concludes this little video. As always, feedback is welcome. You can see, send feedback to support at hellotomorrow.com. And um, yeah, I'd be happy if you try that on your own project and let me know how that goes. Thank you and goodbye.